Happy 2022. Let's hope this is not 2020 the second. Um, I would really prefer 2022 to be actually different and not a nightmare. <laughs> but welcome back to the Ghost Tea Podcast. I'm your host, Ariel Willow, a clairvoyant since childhood, paranormal investigator, and an occult practitioner. Before we jump in, I just want to remind you that everyone has different views on things and that's okay. I don't ask you to believe what I do, I just want to share what I've found in my personal path with others. Today, while I sip my Earl Grey tea in a very fancy mug, um, it's not that fancy. It's just glass with like an aura film on it, but it's so pretty. It's so pretty and rainbow and I love it. Um, I want to talk about infernal guardians or guardian demons. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's go. And for anyone who's interested in booking a session or a reading with me, I restock my shop every Saturday, but usually I have some sessions available throughout the week. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Oh, I just tried to inhale my tea. 10 out of 10. Don't recommend. Um, wow, that was intense. Okay. Glad I didn't die. I'm still alive. You get to deal with me for a little bit longer. Um, all right. So infernal guardians, as I like to call them, but some people call them guardian demons. Um, demons is actually more of a modern version of the word daemon, um, which is what they were called in archaic times. And daemon is actually just the definition of the word is just a, a, a Greek um, description for a divine being or a supernatural being of nature. So a lot of them are just nature spirits, elementals, um, and or demigods. So I just want to point that out. There are a lot of old gods that were actually demonized and called a demon when they are not actually considered a demon at all um, in this in the sense of like the religious meaning of that word um, they are more so just old gods that were not encouraged to be um, celebrated or worshipped anymore by people because they the Christians and the Catholics um, considered them to be demonic uh, and evil because they were not, you know, God. And so a lot of demons, um, high ranking demons, even sometimes, um, are just old gods. Uh, Pan, I know is one is of one of the gods that was demonized as well as Apollo, um, Bastet, uh, I believe Set was also demonized. So, um, a lot of old gods were just considered demons, which is actually very, very sad. But kind of getting into Infernal Guardian, back to that subject. Um, so I, for a very long time, didn't think that, I, I it honestly didn't even cross my mind that we would. Um, I had heard it brought up within the last year. And I know that someone asked me about it. I believe I actually talked about it on my TikTok um, and mentioned it, but I just, I, I hadn't asked Lucifer, I hadn't asked any of the deities that I work with, um, and I hadn't really explored it for myself, so I didn't want to say yay or nay because I just didn't have any kind of knowledge about that myself. But I did ask Astaroth, who is now one of my patrons, um, which I, I think I have not mentioned this, um, but I now have two patron deities. One is Lucifer, one is uh, Astaroth, who it, both are um, infernals. And, you know, Lucifer being one that people know more often than, um, than Astaroth. But I did ask Astaroth, and he said that everybody does have a, a guardian demon or an infernal guardian. Um, but it's just that a lot of people mostly pay attention to the guardian angels, which honestly makes sense with, you know, guardian angels being very encouraged with in uh, Catholic beliefs and things like that. It would make sense that they would stick to that side of things rather than including the infernal guardian. Um, but it actually kind of makes sense to have both. And here's why. If you look at what guardian angels really help us with, I feel like guardian angels, at least in my experience, um, ha really are great with helping us with protection and things like that. They're really good on helping us 
um, through different experiences in our lives. And I do feel that guardian angels and infernal guardians are more so meant for protection rather than guidance. Um, I, I do feel that guides are more so along the lines of beings that would be guiding us through our lifetimes. Um, not to say that infernal guardians or guardian angels can't do that, but I do feel that um, it's more so put on the guides rather than the guardian um, angels and the infernal guardians. Um, but with infernal guardians, I do feel like they really, really help us to explore our shadows. Um, I feel like they really help us to explore the deeper parts of ourselves that maybe we're a little bit nervous to explore. Um, the traumas, the kind of parts of ourselves that maybe we're not super excited about and help us look at them with a fresh set of eyes um, and a fresh perspective. I think that guardian angels can be more so along the lines of helping to encourage us on our path and helping to support us through difficult situations. Um, but I think it's important not to put like a, a definite or a box around the purpose in the members of our spirit team. Um, I know I kind of do that even with how I talk about things. Um, and I think it's more so just to try to find some clarity within my own brain of how to categorize them or what their purpose would be. Because a lot of people ask me the questions of like, okay, well, what, what does a guardian angel help you with? Like, what does a guide help you with? Um, you know, what does an animal guide help you with? Things like that. And I know what they help me with personally in my own path, but I can't also say that that would apply to anybody else's path because your path is different than mine. Your experience is different than mine. So who am I to say like, oh no, they're not going to help you with X, Y, Z um, because it's going to be different for everyone. But I do know that for myself, I have found that angels have been very, very helpful in times in my life where I just feel very lost and I feel very much like I just need that soft support around me. Um, I like to think of it as like members of your family, you know, <laughs> like different people in your family are going to help you with different times in your life and through different experiences. Um, even within friends group, if you don't want to consider family, um, within your friends group, you're going to have certain people who just are better at helping you through certain times in your life than others. Um, there's going to be a friend that's really, really good at helping you get over really traumatic ex experiences and situations. Um, who's going to be kind of that that hard ass that you need um, in your corner when you need someone who's just like, yeah, no, we're not going to be doing that. Like, that is a no-go. We are going to stop that behavior. And we're going to, like, move on. And then you have that, like, very um, nurturing energy friend who is very much the kind of friend who just wants to support you, just wants to see you happy, and is very, like, comforting and supportive and um, encouraging and things like that. And then you have the friends who are really excited about helping you to figure out life. Like they're very good at helping you to figure out where you want to be going, what do you want to be doing, um, helping you find your excitement. And then there's the, the friends who are really just good at helping us to figure out our emotions and figure out like what we really stand for in our lives. And I feel like we can apply that to all of our spirit team. Like each member of your spirit team is going to help you with different things and be assisting you in different ways. And, um, you know, I always have seen for my own uh, experiences and my own path, I've always seen my guardian angel as like the very supportive, um, like, nurturing force behind my purpose and behind my path. And then I have the guardian, uh, infernal or the infernal guardian, um, you know, guardian demon who is really helping me to see like what can be holding me back, helping me look at like the harder, maybe to process things in my path. Like how am I holding myself back? Um, what am I doing to contribute to the behaviors that are, that are um, continuing or continuing a cycle that I don't want to be continuing, or 
um, you know, my, my guides are really there to help me figure out like which pathway I want to take forward. And then my animal guides are really great at helping me to understand what I feel I'm passionate about, what I feel that I want to represent in my life. So for me, that is just what they help me with. I can't say that that's the same for everybody because for everybody, it's going to be different. Um, but I know that for me, that was very much how I have experienced my own spirit team for myself. And so it really makes sense if you think about it as a whole for us to have an infernal guardian, because it's another aspect um, that just contributes to our purpose here and contributes to helping us go through life. And I'm definitely not saying that the other... Um, members of our spirit team couldn't help us with the same things that Infernal Guardian helps us with. But I think we're kind of limiting ourselves. If we limit ourselves to only working with our guardian angels and our guides and our animal guides, because why not accept more help? You know, why not see more things? And I think a lot of people um, actually uh, (laughs) avoid their Infernal Guardians because I think that a lot of people just deep down inside and inherently and intuitively know that your infernal guardian isn't going to hold back. They're not going to be like, oh, it's okay. You can deal with that later. They're going to be like, yeah, so that behavior is not going to help you get anywhere. (laughs) Like we need to change that. Um, And they're really very much like a personal shadow guide for people. Um, And I know that a lot of you guys are going to have questions on how to meet your infernal guardian. I would honestly recommend the same uh, suggestions that I have for meeting any of your spirit team because they're going to be part of your spirit team. So I would say just utilizing uh, meditation, uh, active or or like a less active meditation, um, which I don't think I've mentioned active meditation on my channel before or on my podcast. So I do want to go over a new episode on different ways that you can connect to them. But yeah, I mean, I would just suggest the same techniques to get in touch with them because essentially it is part of your spirit team. So it would be the same um, techniques that you would use to get in touch with them. But I do want to mention that with anybody, and this is myself included, your path as you move forward is going to change and grow with you as you change and grow. And I want to make it clear that there are things that I will say during my path and during my um, sharing knowledge with you guys that will change. Um, I was actually going through a lot of my old videos on my YouTube channel and I was like, wow, don't like how I said that. I don't like what I said there as as advice. I don't feel like that applies to me anymore. And it was so interesting to see how much I've changed over the years. But even within the last two years, there's been a lot of beliefs for me that have shifted and grown or changed um, with my understanding of things for myself. So I want to encourage you guys to not like keep yourself in a box. Um, allow yourself to grow and allow your beliefs to grow with you. Because I think that, um, you know, as humans, we're going to change and grow. And um, I, I, it's honestly just very unfortunate because I, I do see this happen a lot on the internet. Um, having been on YouTube for a, a while before coming to TikTok, Um, and other platforms, just seeing how much people are, you know, berated for things that they've done in their past. And I do think that there is an importance in taking accountability and responsibility for things that you've done that may have been problematic or may have been issue. Um, But I also think that there is a strength in saying, you know, I, what I did was wrong. What I said was wrong. That was not good information, but also hoping that you can move forward with new information and new guidance that would be less problematic, more in line with what you believe now. Um, You know, I know that in the first part of my path, I recommended White Sage because I had no idea that it was not something that was an open practice. Um, I had a friend who is Native American, she's indigenous, and she introduced me to white sage. 
Um, and I was excited to use it because I was very new to my spiritual path, but very quickly found that when I was posting on YouTube, people were like, you know, you shouldn't be using this. This is a close practice. I had no idea. So when I looked back on videos where I was like, yeah, I have white sage that I use. I was like, oh no, Ariel. <laughs> and honestly, that's, that's my bad. I didn't do enough research, um, in the beginning to know that that was a close practice, but I think it's valuable to, be gentle with yourself. Know that there are going to be times that you're wrong. Know that there are going to be times that, um, you know, you might not have the information that you need to know that something is a closed practice. Um, sometimes that information is kind of hard to seek out. I know that there's been times that I've tried to look up whether some something is closed practice or not. And it's really hard to figure out. It's really hard to get that information. I wish that it was more widely known. Um, and widely talked about. And I think that we're starting to get to a place where it is. But I know that this has nothing to do with Infernal Guardians, but it was just on my mind and I wanted to share. Um, and yeah, so I hope this helps. I hope that helped explain what an Infernal Guardian is and kind of what they help you with um, in your spirit team or what they might help you with, depending on you know how your spirit team works with you. I encourage you to get in touch with your uh, infernal guide and and just get to know them, even if you're not actively working with them. Um, get to know them, understand their names if, if you're comfortable doing so. And um, yeah, share your experiences with me. I have a Discord. Um, it is called like the Ariel Willow Discord, I think. <laughs> I forget the actual name of my actual Discord. Yeah, Ariel Willow server. Um, so it's linked in my link tree if you want to check it out. And um, you're more than welcome to join us there and have a conversation. I have a place where you can submit questions for the podcast. But as always, you can always submit them through my website if you want. Um, I, I know that that's probably going to be an easier place for you to do that. But yeah, I know that I've been having a lot of issues in like getting the questions that are left as voice memos on my podcast page um, integrated into the podcast. I honestly don't know how I did it before, but for whatever reason, like the technique that I would have used before, I am assuming, is not working for me this time. So because of that, I haven't been doing a lot of Q&A episodes, but I do want to do a Q&A episode in the future. Um, so yeah. All right. With that said, I think that's it. Um, but as always, like stay safe and keep learning, keep expanding, keep allowing yourself to grow. And I'm excited to see where your spiritual path takes you guys. I hope you all are having a good 2022 and I hope that it continues amazingly from here on out. Um, fingers crossed. I know that there's some crazy astrological transits this year, so we're just going to hold on tight and go through it together. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you guys soon and have a great day.